Hi everyone, my name is Hassain and in this video we are going to talk about the gateway of loading pattern. Gateway of loading pattern comes under two categories of cloud design patterns, design and implementation, and operational excellence. And it's all about offloading shared or specialized service functionality to a gateway proxy. And we are going to see what it means in more details in this video. Related patterns to the gateway of loading pattern are backends for frontends, gateway aggregation, and gateway routing. In the previous videos, we have talked about backend for frontends and gateway aggregation pattern. So I'm going to put links for these videos if you are interested to review these videos in details. And hopefully in future, we are going to cover gateway routing pattern. Now let's go to the examples to help us understand what are the challenges that the gateway of loading pattern is trying to solve. Now let's assume that our system has two services, service A and service B. Then we have an external client that wants to interact with our services. Part of this interaction, we will find that we need to implement certain features in our services. Most importantly, authentication feature. We want service A to be able to tell who is calling service A, whether it's user or system or service account. Service A has to be able to tell who is trying to call service A. This is one important feature that needs to be implemented. Since you have mentioned the authentication feature, we cannot ignore authorization. After we knew who is trying to call our service, we need to check whether this user or system or service account has the right permission or privileges to perform certain actions on our services. This has been done through the authorization. And these two features usually come together. And if you are implementing OAuth authentication, the client needs to send token in every request to your service. And from your side, from service A side, we need to continuously check with every request that this token is still valid. So we need to perform some logic of token validation in our services as well. Also, you might need to have an SSL certificate to encrypt and secure the data being sent between the client and your services. Also, some industries have requirements to use certain encryption algorithms to encrypt the data before sending it through other third parties. So you might need to include encryption feature in service A implementation as well. Also, throttling is very important to be implemented. We want to avoid a certain client from flooding our services with too many requests. Ending up, our services become completely unavailable or may be too busy to process other clients' requests. Throttling could be implemented at number of requests per second or per minute, or the code, the amount of data that the client can upload or download from our services, but throttling features is very, very important to be implemented. Also, we have logging that needs to be implemented at different levels. From the clients sending requests to the services, to our services, sending responses back to the clients. Not only that, we want also to log all of the communications or requests being sent between service A and the backend functions or services and even the database. These will help us to troubleshoot and diagnose any kind of issues that might happen in our system and will help us to find the resolution of the problem sooner. Finally, we have monitoring feature. We need to have a strong monitoring mechanism that's going to help us to know what are the performance bottleneck of our services, how many requests it's able to process per second, what are the top exceptions, top faults, availability percentage. All of these things need to be covered in monitoring. All of these features need to be implemented in service A in addition to the main business logic of service A. Not only that, we will have to re-implement all of these features across all services in our system, which is going to be a huge amount of effort. And this is one of the challenges that the gateway of loading pattern is trying to solve. Looking at some of the features here, like authentication and authorization. I know some of you already are thinking of some Azure services that we can leverage and use that will help us 
to offload these two features from our services and put it in other Azure services instead. And this is what this pattern is about. Some features could be shared across all services in our system, or some features could be very specialized, that it will be even better if we can offload these features from our services and put it in more specialized services instead. Whether using more of Azure or AWS out-of-the-box features, but we can offload these features from our services to free our services to focus on the main business logic. This is the challenge. Now let's see how we can use the gateway of loading pattern to resolve this problem. And the first thing that we need to do is to focus on service A, just to make the view simpler for us. However, everything we are going to do in service A, it's going to apply for service B and any other service in our system. Now let's go ahead and add Azure Load Balancer, which is going to accept encrypted traffic from the user and then perform SSL offloading and continue unencrypted traffic with our services. This is called SSL offloading, which is perfectly fine in this example. However, in some situations you might need to perform end-to-end -end encryption. In this case, you cannot do SSL offloading at the Azure Load Balancer level, and you need to do it at the database level instead. Anyway, now let's get back to our example at this point, we will find that we don't need to manage SSL certificates in service A anymore because we handed it over to Azure Load Balancer to do it for us. So now we can offload SSL feature from service A implementation. And by adding Azure Active Directory, you might feel that we can offload other features as well, like authentication, authorization, token validation, we don't need to implement these features anymore in Service A as long as we can leverage and use Azure Active Directory instead. Also thinking of Azure Applications Insights, which is going to provide a lot of data about our service performance, exceptions, errors, availability. At that point, we can offload the monitoring feature from Service A implementation and offload it to Azure Application Insights instead. Also, we can do the same using Logic Analytics Workspace, which is going to provide different logs for our services. And then we can offload logging feature from service A. Then coming to the encryption feature, we will find that it will have to manage the encryption keys or secrets that's going to be used to perform different encryption functions. And then we will find that Azure Key Vault will be a better place to store those encryption keys and then we can offload the encryption feature from Service A to Azure Key Vault. Finally, coming to throttling features, we will see that we can use API management to offload throttling logic from Service A. And also we can use API management to perform token validation like GWT token validation, as well as SSL certificate management. Also, if we are implemented our services using Functions app, we can still define some throttling limit at the Azure Functions app. This was an example to show you how we can leverage other Azure services to help us offload certain features from our service implementation. Gateway of loading is not limited to these services only. These are just the services that are relevant to the features we have provided in this example. You can go ahead and leverage as many Azure services as much as you like, as long as they are valid for your use case and for your scenarios. And then we can go ahead and leverage all of these Azure services to be consumed and used by all services in our system. This is how we can use the gateway of loading pattern to resolve the problems we have talked about before. Now let's talk about some considerations you need to keep in mind when using this pattern. You need to ensure that the gateway has high availability and it won't be a single point of failure for your application. Also, you need to consider the scalability of the gateway, whether it's going to be scalable enough for your application requirements, so it won't be a bottleneck for your application performance later on. Also, you need to consider which features you will need to offload and which features you will have to implement it yourself. 
The idea is not to offload all features to other services or not to implement everything yourself. It's about having a good balance between both that works for your situation. Also, you should never implement any business logic in the gateway. Remember, the gateway is about offloading certain features, not to have a particular business logic implemented in the gateway itself. Finally, you need to use correlation IDs to help you track different transactions between the gateway and the backend services. Now let's see when you should use this pattern. When you have shared or common application features like SSL or encryption, or you want to move the responsibility to another team like security team or networking team by offloading certain features from your services to other Azure services. Now you allow networking team or security team or other team to be responsible on that offloading service. Now we are coming to the end of this video. I hope now it's clear for you what the gateway offloading pattern is about. What does it mean when we say offloading certain features from our services to Azure services? What are the benefits that we are going to get from that? What are the considerations you need to keep in mind and when you should implement this pattern? I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to put it in the comments below. Thanks for watching.